I'm here with uh, Team Funky Dory. How's it going, guys? <laughs> it's good. Yeah, and how's the race been so far? Soggy. Soggy. <laughs> <laughs> A resounding soggy. <laughs> and uh, how's the spirits? How are you guys feeling? Uh, pretty high. I right? feel pretty good today. Yeah. yeah, last night was a dark moment. <laughs> we had a bit but, of a low. <laughs> but a little low, but this morning's been good. Yeah. Um, just some solid rowing. It's been beautiful flat water. Nice. Mellow day. No stress. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about, have you guys had any uh, misfortunes or near misses so far? Oh, um, yesterday was full of them. <laughs> 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 we Let's made see. a lot of distance. For us, yesterday, maybe not for the rest of the fleet here, but yeah, we, uh -huh. we had like 35 miles or something. And yep. Honestly, given the fact that our top speed is around four knots, if we're <laughs> lucky, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> <with> <laughs> but it ended with like a really, really late night where um, both really. of us were just so exhausted we could hardly make a wise decision so between the two of us. Camp. Yeah. We ended up just anchoring out in front of a beach, questionable beach. Not um, so questionable. Not so, it was nice. Just in the Where about is that? Houses. Um, Qualcomm, Qualcomm, Qualcomm Beach. Yeah. 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 I um, see. Yeah. Put up the tent and uh, we're so tired we didn't even make dinner. Just yeah. fell asleep in the Fell boat. asleep in uh -huh. dry suits, sprawled over beach rollers, which is <laughs> a beach roller each with a, a wooden tent. seat for a pillow. It's pretty comfy. <laughs> so, uh, we did have a tent. <laughs> sorry. What made you guys uh, want to enter the race in the first place? So, we're we're doing this as a way to try and draw attention to ocean conservation along the inside passage. So, someone that we've been kind of working with is Pacific Wild and mm -hmm. they they're up kind of next to Bella Bella and they yeah. do a lot of work on marine planning and ocean conservation and advocacy and education so we kind of I mean we always wanted to explore this for selfish reasons of course too because it's so beautiful but the other reason was we wanted to kind of take care of it and so the race with the amount of viewers and trackers that it sees we were hoping that we could use it as a platform to push for those kind of ideas and movements that we wanted to see happen nice yeah cool so how's the uh, boat holding up so far? It's it's, it's solid. better. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> you can. There's a little bit of indecisiveness so, in our voices, but it's <laughs> solid. Every day we learn something new, and our systems get a little bit better and a little bit quicker. Yeah, the nature of the size of the boat makes it really inefficient in a lot of ways for two people to live and to sail and row and switch back and forth and move things around. So. Every evening and morning we just trip over each other for an hour <laughs> while we move bags from one spot to another in an effort to try and get what we need and feed ourselves. And We started doing that while rowing, which helps. Yeah, coffee while rowing is a great time saver. If the wind is down. Yeah. Cool. All right. One last question. So yesterday, very fittingly, was World Oceans Day. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think is the single most important thing we need to do for the oceans? Uh, well, I guess we probably have some more ideas. Yeah, we have a, probably a couple ideas. Mm -hmm. there, but um, Go for it. They're not our ideas by any means. No. Either. They've been going on for a long time. But I think one of the greatest ways that humans could ever move forward with helping the oceans is by effective planning. Um, been doing it on land, well, arguably effective on land for quite some time now, and the oceans take up way more space yeah. than land does on our planet, and mm -hmm. very few of it is protected, less than 10%. Mm -hmm. and yeah, as unpopular as it is, I would like to see a lot more regulation of the ocean for sure. and how it's used and the spaces which it's allowed to use certain things. Not just regulation, but regulation that works with all the different stakeholders. Because the reality is you're not going to be able to cut out commercial interests, and you shouldn't, because those people are just trying to make a living, and that's a... You can't tell Spell. someone no that, to that. But you can work together, and you can choose what season to do a harvest, or where to do a harvest, or provide How to a, a relief things. area for some species to recuperate and bounce back and trickle over into the other commercial zones around it and um, with 
increased traffic and you we on right on the way here we talked about how Hornby Island has grown in population mm -hmm. size just over, so the area is changing for and sure. um, now is the time to sort of make effective plans mm -hmm. forward because it's only gonna get worse and more traffic yeah. commercial land industry it's difficult to deal with I think in the short term but it helps out a lot in the long term and I think that means that voters and every single person, whether they live near the ocean or not, needs to recognize that they're affected by it, and whether the air they breathe or the climate they enjoy, um, and it's time that they acknowledge that and sort of just acknowledge it. Talk about it every day, whatever it takes to get it sort of into our political dialogue and try and sure. move forward. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, guys, and I wish you luck for the rest of the race. Thank you. Thank you.